he was only five pounds when he was born. So he was super tiny, but I thought he was beautiful. I have to be honest and, and, and say that a lot of my career success is because of, of, of Richard, you know, the drive. And I remember the very first lesson he taught me was, I think I made like $2 doing something like washing a car. And he always told me, always save 10%, always save 10%. So that sticks in my mind to this day is whenever I make money, I think about, I got to save 10%. He was very, um, how can I say, computer savvy tech. When he was nine years old, he started playing songs by himself on a big guitar and left-handed. And he's not left-handed. But my brother that was started teaching him was left-handed. That's the way he got interested on um, playing uh, music. He wanted to go to college and um, there were not enough funds to get him through. And that's what, you know, it's a, it's a, like a bad memory for me. But he was already like ahead of his time. Nothing but A's. A's, as a matter of fact, when uh, he graduated, he got valedictorian. Uh, Rich had two dreams really growing up. One was in the field of, of information technology. I, I do remember my, my family and he talking when I was younger. Uh, he had an opportunity, I believe, to go study with NASA. The other field was in computer technology, and uh, I remember Richard always tinkering with people's stereos and VCRs, and I mean, he would always have random things in his room that people would give him to fix. So troubleshooting was one of his traits. And so, from a computer standpoint, he was someone who I considered to be a computer tech, who, if I can say he knew his stuff, he was up on most of uh, the latest uh, software development, things like that. And during that time, he was sought out by a recruiter. He was called upon by Fiori Industries, who was uh, uh, putting in a bid for uh, Spaceport America, which was located in New Mexico. I mean, that's probably, you know, with exception of, 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 his, of the birth of his daughter, you know, I don't ever recall him being so happy about something in his life. And, you know, it was just like his life had come full circle. Uh, to that point. And I, I think this, this career opportunity was, you know, the breath that he needed in his lungs to get him back into it. He had barely started working there, maybe not even two months, when he had his accident. I felt like my heart. Skip a beat. And I woke up and I was in a hospital bed and I had all these tubes and wires on me. And um, I was scared and I was in a lot of pain. And I didn't know what was going on. I was even asking myself, who was I? Who am I? And if I hadn't seen the whiteboard that said Richard Nunez, patient Richard Nunez, and all the things that were wrong with me, I don't think I would have known who even my, what my name was. Uh, some people I did just done not know, and they talked to me like if they knew me very well. And I was so embarrassed because I could not reciprocate. I could not respond to them. And so I, I realized that my memories were gone. He didn't remember his marriage. I was, um, I was lost. I, if I can't remember who I am, there's a saying, if you don't know where you've been, how do you know where you're going? And so I thought to myself, if I don't know where I've been and I don't know what I used to do, how am I going to have a future? So I thought my future was, was lost. And so I thought to myself, if I want to know who I was, because I was like a detective, I wanted to discover myself, because maybe I thought there was a hope that I could become my old self again. And so next to my patient bed, my smartphone was there, because people would call me. 
but I was also getting email messages. And so whenever I would pick up the phone and I would see a message come in, it would say Zoho Mail. And so I was scared at first because I'm like, I don't remember exactly doing this job. Then my family brings me a laptop to the hospital. And, uh, and I noticed on the laptop, all the web links that I have are Zoho web links. And I thought, well, why do I have all these Zoho app web links? And uh, there were apps that I was writing or that I was working on. And um, I started really looking into what is this Zoho all about? And as I started probing more into Zoho, I started remembering. And so I thought, oh good, if I remember Zoho, maybe I'll remember other things that I used to do. And from there, you know, his, his mind started, you know, going back into what he was before. Although his body necessarily didn't follow, his mind did, you know, his mind started piecing together some of the things that he remembered. So I was really happy. I saw hope that maybe I have a future after all. Things aren't so bad anymore for me. For me, memory is a two, two, two types of memory. It's like in a computer, you have RAM memory and ROM. So in RAM, it's only with the programs that you're loading. And as soon as you turn off the computer, it's gone. But the ROM is that I spend good time with my daughter. Uh, I made her happy. I made her smile. She caught her first fish. Those are ROM memory. Those are memories you store in your heart. When I was doing occupational and vocational therapy, um, they wanted to see if I could remember my computer skills. Because I mean, I had 25 years of computer skills and that's valuable. And to lose that, it's, it's devastating. And so the therapist that I worked with asked me to see if I could remember how to put things together or program. And so one of the first projects I built was a planning system because they wanted to teach us uh, how to manage our time, how to manage all the meds that we had to take, all the uh, therapies and all the doctor visits. So I wrote my first Zoho app as after the accident to help myself. You're talking to a guy that shouldn't be alive, you know, a guy that shouldn't be walking, a guy that shouldn't be talking, and yet he's typing, programming, and even presenting in business meetings, which is you know, amazing to see. Uh, people thought that he would be a paraplegic, that he would be unable to walk, unable to work, unable to do things, and he has far surpassed all of that. To me, his potential is, is endless. Now I have a, a second life. I'm, I'm, I'm using my time to do the best that I can in a spiritual sense, to, to serve God the best way that I know how. To, um, to be good in everything that I do and to help others. And so, yes, I feel I have a second chance.